Welcome to the Words in Season podcast. My name is Kara Marie Morris and I am your host. Jesus gave us examples from nature to understand what it's like to live a supernatural life, not just living by what I see, touch, taste, smell, or feel, or what I can just know how to do or what I learned just from my parents or what I learned just from school, but to be able to live a supernatural life, to live empowered by the Spirit in my everyday life. So welcome to this episode. Remember, you can find more episodes on Spotify, also on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. So in John 15, Jesus is using this example from nature. And of course, we know that God created the world and he doesn't use anything by accident or by coincidence, but he is an intentional God. And in John 15, Jesus is specifically using a grapevine as the example of what it's like for a believer to be connected to God and what that vital union looks like. In John 15, it says, starting in verse five, it says, I am the vine and you are the branches and whoever lives in me and I in him bears much abundant fruit. However, apart from me, cut off from this vital union with me, you can do nothing. If you abide in me and you are abiding vitally united to me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you will and it will be done for you. And when you bear and produce much fruit, my Father is honored and glorified. And you show and you prove yourself to be true followers of mine. I have loved you just as the Father has loved me. Abide in my love and continue in his love with me. So he's saying that the way that we experience what the love of God is, is to abide in him. You know, I've been in church my whole life and naturally in my head, I know that God loves me, but to be able to experience that, I need to be able to abide in him. What does that mean? It means staying in the word of God. It means reminding myself with the promises of God intentionally, just as God was an intentional God when he was using an example of a grapevine and just as intentional as Jesus knew exactly what we would need thousands of years later that these examples would help us today. I need to be that intentional with reminding myself that I cannot do anything without him. And part of that is it humbles myself. It humbles me to not just think I got this. I can do life on my own because it brings when I think that I can do life on my own, it brings stress. It brings sickness and disease because I am stressed. It and also just it limits me because I'm only thinking with me. I'm only thinking in what I know. But as I abide in him, as I pray, as I spend time in the word of God, it expands my vision to live the way that he wants me to live. I don't want to just live the way that my feelings are dictating to me or what my parents taught me, even if it was good stuff. I want to live in, in abiding with him at a higher level, in a supernatural way so that Whenever the world is saying you should be offended and you should be mad and you should do this and do that, I can see above all of the circumstances and I can see, oh, let's see what Jesus said about me. Let's see what Jesus said about the situation. So that that is just showing me how I can abide and let these words abide in me. And how do we prove it? We prove it by bearing much fruit. We bear that fruit of the spirit that that the love of God produces in us. It's the proof of the love of God that's in us. And it it displays itself in many forms. It's the love of God showing itself in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. And all of these fruits of the spirit that are now my nature, all these things like anger and rage and bitterness and lust, All of these things from the past or from the old man, that's not my nature anymore. But now, because his words abide in me, the fruit of the Spirit, that's what pleases God. And that's what comes out of me as I abide in his love. 
a couple of weeks ago I was gardening in my my house and outside and kind of cleaning up and doing some yard work getting ready for the season change and this grapevine has kind of taken over a part of my yard and this grapevine I don't even know how it got there it wasn't there when I moved in and suddenly it's there and it is climbing all over the fence and it's even coming out of the fence and I trim it a little bit here and I trim it a little bit there but it's still because I've never taken out the root it's still there so I thought I'm gonna take some of this in it is a beautiful plant it's very delicate and the leaves are beautiful so I thought I'm gonna take this and make it into a garland so I even put it in water in my house and I put it in water in my house in less than 24 hours it was dead why because it is a very it's a different kind of plant i also did the same with an ivy plant i thought these would be so pretty to put in my house the ivy plant i put in there i didn't even have to put it in water because it was so hardy and it survived it was there for weeks and it it couldn't you couldn't even tell that it had been outside of taken outside of its plant it's mama plant it was living on its own but there's a reason, and it is specific and intentional, that Jesus didn't call us an ivy plant. He called us a grapevine. That grapevine was so delicate, and it was dead in less than 24 hours when it was separated from the vine. And that is an example as us as Christians, as me, that I have to keep this union and abide in Him every day. Of course, we have that in potential when we are born again, that we are in Christ, but now experientially, I have to walk that out every day so that my spirit is dictating to this and to this, what we're gonna think, what we're gonna say, what we're gonna do. I cannot do anything without him. And just like that branch that I separated from the vine and it withered in less than 24 hours, that's me. I know that if I go without reading my Bible or if I go without prayer, I start getting cranky. I start and let the natural man dominate me. Does it mean that I wither up and die in less than 24 hours? No, but I'm not living in the things that God has for me and what would be best. So I have to stay and abide in him vitally. Stay attached to the vine as his branch. And then going back up to John 15 and verse one, it says, I am the true vine, Jesus talking and the Father is the vine dresser. Any branch in me that does not bear fruit, that stops bearing, he cuts off and he trims, and he cleanses and he prunes each branch to bear fruit, to make it bear more and richer and more excellent fruit. So whenever God is showing me things that I need to change, it's not that he cuts us off the vine completely. He wants to cut the sin out in our life, and he gave us that authority in Luke 10, 19, it says that I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. Well, the power of the enemy in my life may be wrong thinking or gossip or bitterness. And God has given me the authority now to cut that off in my life. I don't have to pray and ask someone else to do it for me. He has delegated that authority to me. So in James 1 15 it says and then the evil desire when it is conceived gives birth to sin and sin when it is fully matured brings death so God knows that sin is not good for us whenever I have wrong thinking whenever I have wrong speaking whenever I'm speaking things that I know I shouldn't say or like I said gossip or bitterness or anger or something that I'm holding on to that the Lord has dealt with me to to let go of in my life Whenever I allow sin into my life, he knows that brings death. And that's why he wants to prune that off. He has given us the authority to prune, to be self pruning branches so that he does not have to do it, but he has given us the authority to do it for ourselves. He has empowered us to be, to live above the circumstances of the world. Some people say, well, I can't help that because this is my personality, or I can't help that because this is the way my family is. But Jesus died so that we can have authority, so that the Holy Spirit who indwells us, literally indwells us to change our innermost being and our personality, that we have the ability to be transformed from glory to glory to look like him. So Jesus is the vine. 
the Father is the vine dresser, and I am the branch, a self pruning branch that I can say, I'm not dealing with that sin anymore. I'm not letting that in my life anymore, and I'm cutting that thing off. So I stay connected with Him, just like I said in, in the beginning that whenever I took that vine in the house, and it died, it withered in less than 24 hours because it wasn't connected. I stay connected with him. How do I stay connected? Well, first of all, you're born again. You believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And then second of all, you continue to remind yourself through prayer, through Bible reading, through going to church and being a part of a, a group of believers that are working together for the faith of the gospel. That is how I remain and abide in him. And that will produce, based on dwelling in this love of God, it will produce the fruit of the Spirit in my life rather than the fruit of the flesh. And then he gave me authority. He gave me the authority to prune off the sin that would try to bring death in my life, death in my thinking. Maybe it's not just cessation of life, but maybe it's death of a relationship because I'm bitter. Or maybe it's jealousy or envy or wrong thinking. Or maybe it's uh, words that are coming out of my mouth that are just full of hatred and full of fear and anxiety. Those things I can prune off because I keep these words in my mouth which keep me abiding in Him. And then the last scripture is Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, that I strip off and I throw aside every encumbrance and every sin which so readily clings to us and entangles us. And we run with patient endurance the appointed race set before us, looking away from all that would distract and looking to Jesus, who is the leader and the source of our faith. And he is also the finisher. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross and despised the shame, ignoring the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Because Jesus is at the right hand of the throne of God, and now he delegated that authority to me. If he can despise the shame and he can endure, I can endure. I can wait. I can, I can do whatever it is that he has placed in my heart. If it means to stay put, if it means to go, if it means to wait, if it means to move, we can do it. We can make it. We can let go of the past. We can let go of sin. We can let go of shame because Jesus Christ is the vine. The Father is the vine dresser and I am the branch. It means that because I abide in this love that he has provided, it means that I can bear much fruit and that I can prune off all the things that would try to bring death in my life. He has given me the authority as I abide in him to cut off the things of the past, to cut off that thing that would try to bring death in my mind, in my thinking, in my emotions, in my relationships, in my finances. I can cut that off and say, no, I'm abiding with him. And because I abide with him, his words abide in me. And he said, if you ask anything in my name, that it shall be done. And I believe the promises of God in my life. They will come to pass. So thank you for watching the Words in Season podcast. Thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing and sharing on your social media. But most of all, most importantly, remember that every time you open the Bible, the Word of God, that Jesus always has a word in season for you.